Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I, of course, <laughs> had to use the new Frappe card wafer die set from Honeybee Stamps, newest release. Amazing release. I'm, I don't even know where to be in, but I had to be in with this. It just, this was so me. So I started off with a whole bunch of pieces of Canson XL watercolor paper. I just went through my little like pile of scraps that I had of this and I had several that were big enough for like the base of the frappe card. So I took those along with a couple of, these are Prima watercolor sets. I have the classics on the left and the complexion set on the right. And the complexion has a whole bunch of shades of browns, which I was like, those are perfect. Those look like, um, you know, co iced coffee slash frappuccino style colors. So I did really quick, very basic, simple background watercoloring. All I would do was wet down the piece with a large brush and clean water and then drop in a ton of colors and mix them around, let them move around, do their thing, and then let it dry. That's it. Nothing fancy. I didn't even bother taping any of these pieces down because I was doing several of them. Um, plus, I'm going to die cut them so that'll like flatten them out anyway. So I did a few with the brown sort of shades, letting them kind of swirl and do their thing. That one I did just before this with like the pinks and purples. I was thinking of that unicorn frappuccino. I've never tried it. My One of my kids has and enjoys it. To me, it just looks like a sugary mess. Like, ugh, ugh. But it's pretty. <laughs> I like the colors of it. So I did that one. Then I did one in pinks. And I had to do one in greens. Um, because one of my favorites is a green matcha latte frappuccino and green matcha latte is actually, a, oh, yum, yum, love. Anyway, so I had to do one in greens because I was like, ooh, that'd be a fun color to do one in. So did all of them, let them dry. After they're dry, I die cut the bases of them with the separate base die from the frappe card. And then I also die cut the whipped cream with the whipped cream die and the straw. The card base itself, you will either need a extended platform and cutting plates for like a big shot machine, etc., or like the Gemini die cutting machine, the big one, because the die itself measures four and a quarter inches by 12 inches. Just FYI. Um, you can cut a standard size eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock with it, though. You just cut it on an angle, um, the die on an angle on the piece of paper, so you only get one card base from the paper but then I used all the extra scraps that's how I die cut the whipped cream and the straws etc from so that's how I got my card bases and I had folded them in half and then I had sponged on just a little bit of um, tumble glass distress ink along the top because you're thinking you know that plastic little dome just to give it a little bit of color against what will be the whipped cream and then the straws I sponged on um mowed lawn distress ink to give it that nice shade of green and then just, I started adhering all of these using just some Gina K Connect glue. So I adhered the straw first, and then I would hit, adhere each of these bases that I had done all the fun watercoloring on. So I adhered that over top, and then I'm going to adhere my whipped cream of, over that. And then I've got basically a frappe shaped card, which is just fun. Um, and the card, FYI, is at the widest at the top there. Um, I guess the widest of the part of the dome or the lid. Uh, it's again, it's about four and a quarter inches. And then the card itself without the straw is almost six inches roughly. So um, with the straw, this ends up being, you know, six and a half, six and a half inches by four and a quarter. So this will not fit in a standard A2 sized card. Uh, ones like this though, I would, you know, hand deliver. These would be great to give to teachers because I'm going to put gift cards in them, of course. And I'll show that as well in a minute. Um, and like I said, I made a bunch. These were just so many ways you could go with this. And you, and even if you're not into like frappes and all that stuff, um, make them look like, you know, slushies or slurpees or, you know, any sort of ice drink, like just ugh, fun. So like I said, gift cards. The new gift card pocket wafer die. I love this. I die cut a bunch of them from just vellum and then um, reinforce the little folds uh, in the vellum that the die, the die die cuts, and then it also embosses the little folds. 
And then to assemble these, I am using just some score tape along the back and I'm using wide score tape so it actually goes past the little flaps so that I don't have to apply any extra adhesive. There's enough score tape there that the little flap will be adhered and you can insert the flaps like you can put them on the inside or the outside of this little pocket just depending on what you're planning on doing with it. I just um, adhered the flaps around the outside of it because I'm going to um, pop these into the inside of these frappe cards. So that's why I use this wider adhesive. If you wanted to adhere just the flaps and no adhesive picking out, I would use, um, or peeking out, I would use one eighth of an inch adhesive, but here I'm using the quarter. So I've got the flaps down. There's still adhesive pe peeking out, so I can just pop these right onto the inside of these cards. And then they're adhered, and then at the end I can insert little gift cards into those like it's so cute and there's like a nice little size notch there because this is the size of a gift card so you can slip it right in so did that with all my cards and then for the sentiments I'm using a couple of the new sentiment wafer dies this is the enjoy wafer die and I did a ton I did so much die cutting <laughs> so much die cutting because I die cut all the sentiments three times over and then I'm stacking them all these three times over just to give it gives it that extra depth and dimension so I just did little dabs of glue stacked each one three times which it honestly didn't take that long I kind of you know I just go into like almost like mass production mode do everything at the same time and then after I would stack all three, I die cut the base layers from the extra scraps of white cardstock. So then I would add more dabs to the back of each die cut sentiment and then pop that onto its outline. And these dies, just like pretty much all of the honeybee dies, die cuts, there's a die cut for the word, there's an outline, and then there is a second outline that does all the fun little piercing. So I just used the base die and the outline for all of mine. So stacked them all together, adhered them to the base. And then to complete my sentiments, I'm using the sentiment banners wafer die. I didn't even bother cutting these apart. Um, I just ran it through with more, just a bunch of scraps of white cardstock. So I've got a whole pile of little white cardstock banners here and um, getting ones in the sizes I want and then I'm using the coordinating stamp sets to stamp all my sentiments. So I have the new enjoy set and the because set and then just picking what sentiments I want. And for the green, my little matcha frappuccino um, card, I'm using the new Mode Lawn Distress Oxide ink to stamp onto these banners. I prefer the oxide inks for stamping over um, distress, just a regular distress inks. The oxide inks, they're a little creamier and they stamp better. So I use that one for the green and then I use the new ground espresso, of course, for the brown on these little banners for my coffee or frappuccino sliced ice, slash iced coffee, whatever, um, cards. And then after I have all my sentiments stamped, I can start adhering all these. And all my excess banners, I'm just putting back in the packaging with the dies. So the next time I go to use these, I've got them all, a ton of them pre-cut, ready to go. I, you know, simple and quick and easy. So set those aside. And then with the sentiments, with the die cut sentiments, I'm adhering those um, directly to my card front with that same glue and then the little banners I'm going to adhere with just little strips of the Doris foam tape just to pop those up a little bit. So pop those onto all of these little banners and then I'm going to stick those into place and again I went through and did everything at once. I didn't you know show every single one I made because one, this video will be three times longer, and two, it's just the same process. I would just use different colors, mixed up a couple of the sentiments to um, liven things up a little bit. And also, to keep it off camera, you should have seen my desk. It was an absolute disaster when I was making these. It was fun, though. So I used that. And then for the inside of the card, I'm using the new um, Shake It Off stamp set. Lots of fun sentiments and whatnot, you know, frappe and latte and friendship and all that fun stuff. Really like the mix of fonts again in this one. It's fun. So I use that on the inside of the card. Again, using different distress oxide inks, either the Mode Lawn, the Ground Espresso, and then for my uh, pink ones, I used Picked Raspberry distress oxide inks. So stamp that on all of the insides of all of these. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I was only, only going to add a few 
little sequins and confettis and whatnot. And then I just went to town. I started sprinkling them onto here and I really liked how it looked. And then I just like went nuts and like covered all of them with sequins and confetti and just had fun. Um, I just, I thought it was fun to add all that extra bling. So it actually did not take very long to adhere these. I literally would just kind of dump them onto the cards and then, um, I would just pick them up with my little crystal katana, put down a dab of glue and press them into place where I wanted them. Usually I kind of place things first, you know, where I want them and then just adhere them into place with these. I just dumped them on and then would just add dabs of glue with these more randomly. I'm not going for, you know, a triangle formation or odd numbers or anything like that. I just filled these with these fun little confetti and whatnot. I just thought it would just bring out the bling and just make them more fun. So I used green ones, of course, on the green, pinks on these two, pink and purple um, frappuccino slash smoothie cups. And then on the brown ones, I just, I had a brown sequin mix. Um, anything would work, really. And you could definitely tone it down if you wanted, but it's kind of fun adding a ton of them. So I adhered a whole bunch of them, and like I said, I literally just dumped them on there. <laughs> and then just picked them up, dabbed on little bits of the glue, and pressed them all into place, and then let them all dry. And um, that's going to finish off all of these fun frappe-shaped cards. And my final step with all of these is just you can insert gift cards into them. And of course, I have... A thing for Starbucks gift cards because they're just they're cute and fun but Starbucks a coffee shop 7-eleven for you know if you want to give them to kids for Slurpees that would be really fun to make these do them in really bright colors and put in like a little like gift cards so kids could get Slurpees slushies whatever so how cute like seriously so yeah these fit perfectly in the little gift card pocket and that finished off my card. So as always, there will be a link below the video to my blog post with a link to all of the supplies used and the supply list. All that info will be in the description box below as well as on the blog. So you can check that out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.